Alrighty guys, welcome back to another video. On today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I like to color correct my B-RAW footage inside of Adobe Premiere. I'm going to be using Adobe Premiere CC uh, 2020, I believe. Uh, before we get to that, I just wanted to say thank you to all the new subscribers to the channel that joined after the uh, review of the new Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera that I just picked up. Uh, thanks so much for subscribing and for checking out my new content here on this video. So yeah, I'm going to try to give back a little bit towards that by uh, showing you how I like to color correct my footage. Now this might not be the best way to color correct footage. This is just how I do it. If you guys know of a better way, let me know in the comments below. If there's something that I'm missing, let me know in the comments below. Um, because I just always color correct to how I like to see things. I just kind of look at it and when I think it looks right, that's where I go. Just let me know what you think. If you have a better better way of doing it or just a tip for how I could improve it, uh, just let me know. First thing you're going to want to do is uh, open up Premiere, obviously. So go ahead and open this up here. I'm going to go ahead and create a new project. And uh, one thing I like to do, if you're working on an older computer like I am, I like to change this setting right here so that on the ingest, it'll actually create a proxy. And then I set that to 1024 by 4, 540 Apple ProRes because I'm working on an iMac. It's an older iMac, but when I do this, it actually helps the footage run way smoother. And what it's doing is it's basically creating a like half of HD uh, file for your 4K footage. And then uh, it's it's just using that to play back while you edit. So yeah, that's just a tip there. It doesn't really have anything to do with color correcting, but uh, a tip that I like. And if you're on PC, I would assume that H.264 would probably work a little bit better than the Apple Pro Res Proxy. So, all right, so once we've got that done, go ahead and hit OK and give it a second to open up. All right, and then I'm going to grab some B-RAW footage. Let's see. Uh, let's grab some from a new new video. Well, let's, let's grab a couple different things. Here's a project that I shot this last weekend. Let's go down and find the footage. Here we go. So I'm just going to find a clip that might have a little bit of color in it. Something like this here. This one's a little shorter clip. Let's go ahead and grab that one. All right. And then let's see. I'm going to grab a couple more. So nine. Uh, let's see. Footage. Uh, here's some shot of some pizza you may have seen in a different video that I did. And you'll see that when I when I import that media, it actually goes ahead and automatically starts creating the proxies for that. So that's a really cool, really handy little feature there. And let's grab one other clip. The next one I'm gonna grab, actually, I'm gonna make sure it was shot at ISO 3200. Um, that'll give us kind of an example of how we can adjust some low light footage. So, sorry, just kind of looking through these here. Uh, let's grab this one. I believe this one was shot at ISO 3200. Uh, now the Blackmagic obviously has the dual native ISO, so 400, 3200, going to give you the cleanest results. So I shot that at 3200 in B-RAW, so I can actually change the ISO in post too. So it's going to go ahead and ingest all of those. And then how we check if the file has a proxy attached to it is we're going to go ahead and change this to the list view here. Right click metadata display and up here just start typing proxy. And uh, if you just click down here, this will add a little line all the way at the end here to tell you if the proxies are online or not. So you can tell right now that all of these are offline at the moment. And while that's importing, just wanted to say another quick thank you to all the new subscribers. If you like the content, go ahead and feel free to share it with your friends. Um, if you learn something from it, you know, if you're not a subscriber and you learn something from this video, um, feel free to hit that subscribe button. I do content like this, uh, talking about video, photography, all sorts of things. And if there's something that you want to see, just let me know in the comments below. And uh, hopefully I can get around to making videos that you need that you want to know about um, because that's really what this channel is here for it's here for you guys I enjoy making the videos and I think it's a good creative outlet but really if they're not benefiting you guys then I don't want to be making them because it's a lot of time and a lot of work and I just want to make sure somebody's getting something out of this 
All right, first one's done. Let's go ahead and drag that guy onto our timeline here. Shot in 4K, looks like the DCNG, uh, 60 frames per second. So I'm actually probably gonna slow it down to about where it reaches about 24 frames per second. So what you're gonna wanna do first is make sure that this Lumetri color tab is opened up. Where you can do that is if you go under window and then just scroll down here till you find Lumetri color, click on that guy, boom, there it is. I mean, it's already opened on mine, obviously. Um, then the next thing I like to do is I like to make any adjustments to the actual clip that I might need to make. So to adjust the B-RAW footage inside of Premiere, you're actually gonna go up here to effect controls on the selected clip. Then you're gonna click uh, where it says master there. And here on decode using, you're gonna click down and go to clip. Now this gives you all of the options if you need to change the, the white balance, you can do that here. Uh, let's see, you can change all the different options here. Custom. We're going to go as shot because I know I had the proper white balance already for that. You can change the ISO if you need to. Say I need to brighten this up a bit. I can bring it up to about 400. That I think is a little too bright, but I am going to probably bring it to about 200 because I think that's going to give us a lot of room to work. I'm going to go ahead and tap the highlight recovery because that's going to bring a little bit more detail. Kind of expand this window a little bit. Um, so hopefully you can see. It's going to bring a little bit more detail into this window right here. Kind of see that going on and off. Highlight recovery, really nice tool there. All right, from there we can get into the actual color correction. Uh, you can do a little bit of it here if you like. These controls seem to work well. Um, obviously it's very, very fine detail because you go all the way to four, that's way too much. Um, so yeah, you got to kind of find the exact right point. And I think for this one, we want to bring the saturation up to about 1.65. I think that's going to look really nice. Um, so the big thing with B-RAW footage is the saturation is really, really low so that you can bring that color in however you want to bring it in. Uh, contrast seems to be a bit low as well. So I'm going to probably bring that up Ooh, too much. Yeah, I really don't need a whole lot. That looks nice. All right, and then I'm just going to leave these values the same, at least for now. And now these these individual values are things that you're going to want to adjust per clip. And then obviously you're going to want to make sure that uh, when you're adjusting these for multiple clips that you keep them the same for the same scene, same lighting style, things like that. Okay, so now we can get into the Lumetri color tab a little bit. And what I like to do for that is I like to create a new adjustment layer. Um, this just allows me to affect multiple clips, obviously, if I have multiple clips underneath it. So I like to work on the adjustment layer. And then it gives you just a little bit more control as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just, just barely adjust the exposure. Just kind of see what that does. Um, now sometimes I don't actually change the exposure, but I like to adjust it just to see what it does. It gives me a little bit more information about what's in the shot so that I can have things to kind of look for later on. So I'm going to bring that back down to about 0.4 over. I like that. That looks pretty good. Um, next, I'm going to bring the highlights down just a bit to kind of try to bring a little more detail, maybe a little more color into that blue sky up there. I think we're going to go all the way down to negative 40, negative 50. Let's go to negative 50 for this one. I think that'll look nice. Uh, let's go ahead and boost the shadows just a little bit about 16 it's Starting to feel good um, And then I'm gonna crunch the blacks down just a little bit Let's see how that looks. Yeah, I think that looks nice kind of brings out the detail now crunching the blacks down will definitely help when it's starting to look a little washed out All right, I think I'm gonna leave the whites where they're at I am going to boost the saturation just a bit more over here. Let's bring that to about 110. It's looking a little yellow, so that might be just a touch too much. I'm also going to bring the white balance down just a hair towards the cool side. Bring a little bit more blue in there. Yeah, that's starting to look nice. All right, let's bring this back down to about 105. 
Now, like I said, I always adjust to my own eye. Um, so these numbers are kind of subjective and can change from like project to project, basically. Um, after we finish up with this one, we'll actually throw this color correction onto another clip and see how it looks. Um, now I do like to add a creative LUT. Um, I use the internal one. I think the one that I really like so far has actually been this clean Fuji A LDR. I think that stands for low dynamic range. Now, because the black magic is such a high dynamic range camera, um, it can kind of tend to look a little too even for me. Um, so I like to click that one into place and it's going to do something pretty harsh here. Yeah. Yeah. Way, way harsh. Um, but then what I do is I bring the intensity way down and that's just a personal preference. You might have a LUT that you like to use. Um, yeah, bring it way down. And I just like, I like what that does for the highlights kind of makes everything pop a little more in my opinion. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add just a hair of sharpness and just a little bit of vibrance. All right. So now if we want to see what we did with the Lumetri color tab, we can actually just click right here to turn that guy off. It's not a huge difference. I apologize for how slow my computer is. Not a huge difference, but kind of helps with the, uh, the flat washed out look. You can really notice it in the details, like in the chair, things like that when it kind of just pops. So yeah, that's all I'm going to do to that clip. Let's go ahead and drop the next one online. And we're going to go ahead and drop this one on. And I believe this shot was way overexposed and eh, not, not way overexposed, but a little bit overexposed shot of some pizza that I got the other day. Really good. So again, go here to master, change it to clip, and then we're going to go ahead and adjust this down. We don't need quite 400. Yeah, 200 looks nice. Um, let's increase the saturation to about 1.5. See what that does for us. Makes those yellows pop really nicely. I like that. Um, contrast, we're going to increase to about 1.05. 5 here I believe yeah now what do we do over here pretty close 1.10 and 1.65 so pretty similar values there um, and then let's go ahead and just see what slapping this adjustment layer on does for us see how that kind of affects the footage definitely brings out those colors quite a bit um, I think that actually looks really good so yeah, kind of pops the highlights a little bit. Doesn't quite blow them out, but yeah, definitely adds some more detail in there. So awesome. All right, let's see if we've got the, there we go. We have got the uh, proxy now for this file. Yeah, this one was shot at 2.6K, so it's gonna be a little bit smaller. Okay, so this clip was actually shot at 2.6K. Uh, so the resolution is going to be a little bit smaller than the 4K videos from before. I'm just going to scale it up for this. Um, technically, we're losing a little bit of detail, but I still think that looks really good. All right. And this one was shot at 120 frames per second, slowed down to 24 frames. Love that. You can see those droplets just falling right off there. I'm actually playing back at quarter resolution, so... Uh, the hassles of working with a 2011 computer. Love it. But yeah, it actually runs really smoothly as long as I uh, create those proxies. Again, clip. I'm going to go ahead and highlight recovery. And here we don't necessarily need the full 3200 ISO. It feels a little bit overexposed. Um, look how good that looks for 3200. I mean, you can barely see any noise in there. So let's go ahead and bring it down. Let's bring it on down to about maybe 1600. Feels good, right? All right, um, we're gonna go ahead and bring the saturation up. This one I think needs a little more, 1.65 feels good. Contrast, 1.1 feels good. Slap this adjustment layer on here. Let's see what it does for us. I'm thinking that's going to be just a bit too saturated. So I'm actually just going to adjust it in the clip. Now I know honestly, like I know these clips don't go together, um, but just, you know, humor me. 1.45, bring 
bring the saturation down just a touch. Honestly, if I was working on these clips, I would create a different adjustment layer for this clip specifically because uh, one, it was shot at 3200 ISO and two, just a very different lighting situation. Um, and I think sometimes when you shoot in low light and you have that 3200 ISO, you actually need to crunch the blacks a little bit more to make it just a little cleaner looking. Yeah, I actually think that turned out pretty good. So we can kind of look at these clips now. Just see, let's go ahead and play this back at quarter resolution. See kind of what we're looking at. Yeah, really nice bright colors here. I love the way that blue pops. I apologize for my computer's rendering, not playing back very nicely. Maybe I'll export these clips and just kind of throw them in over the video here. Nice, nice. All right, let's see that pizza. Good looking pizza. Very nice. Love that. Who said you couldn't get a shallow depth of field on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera? Anybody who told you that, you show them this video. All right. All right, guys, so that's basically how I do it. Uh, just remember, use an adjustment layer. I like that a lot. If you're gonna use a LUT, go ahead and uh, just make sure that you adjust the intensity because most of the time, a full 100% intense LUT is gonna be way too much. Um, here, you can add some vignetting if you want. That's kind of a fun thing to do. Vignetting you can go a little too far with if you're not careful. So yeah, just be careful with that. Um, color wheels. I honestly don't mess with those much, um, but you could. I just find that when you start to mess with them, the values just become so extreme so quickly. So yeah, I personally don't like messing with them. Um, that might just be a fault of mine though. Uh, curves, you got your classic RGB curves here. You can do your classic S curve if you need to. Um, usually that again is gonna be a little too harsh, so probably not going to do that that often you're more likely going to be getting like a, a slight like you know shallow wave curve oh gosh get some emo pizza going on here reminds me of like an early 2000s movie <laughs> so all right go ahead and uh, fix that fix that there we go yeah that looks fine i think so yeah, thanks for sticking with me. Thanks for watching the video. If you learned something new, feel free to hit that subscribe button. I don't know which side of the screen it's on. Um, yeah, if you like the content, let me know. Leave me a comment. Leave me a like. And uh, just let me know what you want to see in the future. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And have a great day.